Let us worship. Well, welcome to the Hold the Line podcast, guys. This might be my favorite podcast experience yet. This is going to be awesome. We are here on the Let Us Worship bus, leaving the state capital of Montana after an amazing night. Let's go! This is state number 41 on our our 50 state tour. And I made the crazy, wild, insane idea about bringing my family on the bus to spend the next two nights together. And so we are sleeping on the bus, we're living in the bus, and we just thought, how cool would this be? We get asked all the time about what is it like traveling with your family? What is it like bringing your family in on an adventure? So you ask the question, here we are. We don't know how this podcast is gonna go, but it's gonna be real. So my first question, and let's just start with this, is for my wife, Kate. By the way, for those of you that don't know, this is my amazing wife. We have been married for a very long time, almost 19 years. Yeah. And we were high school sweethearts. And we've here we are. We've been together longer than we've been not. We've been together not longer than we were apart. And uh, <laughs> now we have four kids. Somehow this happened. Let's go. They're Let's all go. blondies, right? You'll see them anywhere, everywhere. Can't, can't, can spot them in a crowd. He glows in the dark. And uh, so this is, why don't you, let's do this. Let's start, let's introduce our names. This is my wife, Kate. Who are Ezra. You? How old are you? I'm 10. What's your whole name? Ezra Justice Foyt. And you're 10. What's your name? Zion. David. Zion David Foyt. Foyt. And how old are you? Six. Six. What's your name? Malachi Christopher Foyt. I am 11. And I am Katura Liv Foyt, and I am almost 14. All right, so almost 14, almost 12. Six, ten, just turned ten, and beautiful. <laughs> and so we're here in the back of the bus, and you know, one of the cool things, and I want to start by saying this, we were praying tonight over the Capitol here in Montana, which is the state I was born and raised in. We were praying and declaring Malachi 4, that this would be a season in America and the world where God would turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children. And we really believe part of our calling in raising up this movement is not just going after revival in our cities and our communities and the nation, going after revival in our home and believing that if God can do what he's doing every single night, as we're seeing across America, he can do it in our homes. He can do it in our marriages. He can do it in our families. And the cool thing that I'm learning as these guys travel with us is God moves through them in amazing ways. And what they can see and what they experience, I want you guys to hear. So first question, what is it like bringing four kids to revival meetings? What does that do? What is it like? Oh my goodness. It has changed so much over the years. I actually think it was a little bit easier when they were babies. So just strap them on. They were like fine to play with water bottles and rocks and you know now it's like we have this crazy crew but i always bring football yeah we have frisbees or whatever and the kids for me i don't need them to act all prim and proper in a revival meeting i want them to just be around it and be surrounded by the presence of god and see it but in a in a really relaxed setting it's been very special for our kids to just be kids Worshiping. I mean, there's videos of our kids, I'm sure, playing football. And there's only been one time when the kids hit somebody with a football. That was <laughs> that was recently. Yeah. Um, that was that embarrassing. Was my, that was, that was bad. Who, that was Who did that? Who did that? It actually wasn't one of our it, kids. It was, but it was, it was, it was one kid. of our friends. He just accidentally did they were They were worshiping at yes. one's worship and they got hit with a football. In yes. the head. Oh, good Lord. You guys I, are going to scare really people sorry. from going. I'm sorry, sweet lady. <laughs> That was that was a very <laughs> sad accident, but other than that, that time it it has just been so fun. The kids getting to see people, you know, healed, saved, delivered, yeah. in just such a free environment. Yeah. And I know that it's imprinted them, and so, it's worth all the hard. Like people are like, ah, I couldn't do it. My kids would be bored. Yeah, our kids have to w- endure long car rides, a lot of flights. Lots sound of waiting, checks. lots of sound checks. I mean, Meetings. they are honestly rock stars, and they're just normal kids. So we yeah. do all the hard things, but they just have learned to do it, yeah. and to um, 
have good attitudes yeah. and then sometimes they don't and they are kids and yeah. we just have those moments so it's it's very real <laughs> and i'm sure everyone in the bus is going to oh, see everyone in the bus moments. is going to experience Ew, some yep. moments that's yeah. for sure but uh, we're just real like yeah. it's just we're not so we got three boys <laughs> yeah we got three boys it's a lot of testosterone guys lots, lots of um action. but i want to start first let's go back to covid everything locks down their school shut down, their soccer shuts down, their sports shut down, they can't see their friends, everyone's in fear. And Kate and I just made the decision, we're like, you know what? We're not gonna let this virus dictate their lives right now. It's just a nonstop yeah. bummer, right? Right. And so we started, as Let Us Worship began to kick off, we just made the decision, we're pulling them out of school, yeah. we're gonna homeschool them, something we said we would never do. Never, never, never. Which I got a lot of respect for everybody that's I'm doing so this. Amazed. You guys are heroes. We just said, I don't think we could ever do that. Well, guess what? We ended up doing it. And we did it for a couple years. And um, and and when we made that decision, I don't know, maybe talk about that. What was that like? <laughs> it was awesome. In fact, now that our kids are older they, and, and they hear of COVID and they hear of 2020 I and 2021, what, like you don't even have, she has I, no idea. I don't have no fear. I had no fear during then. Like no, when I think of 2020, I thought of just, fun joy family time we just got yeah. on the road tons of airplanes and just yeah. traveling i thought of no fear at all it was just like so it worked yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really did yeah and it was and it was cool because not only were we worshiping as a family in city to city and they were they had front row seats to like this incredible move of god but it also paved the way to build boldness and courage for other families out there, yeah. you know, to come to cities like Portland right. and Seattle and places that were crazy and gnarly. We, our family went to all of these. Right. And, and part of our heart in doing that was just to, and part of our heart in doing this video is just to provoke parents out there, like bring your kids along with you on the journey. Like yeah. God has a plan in store not just for me as a minister or a worship leader, but for my whole family. And I think a lot of times our kids miss out on so much because we think they can't handle it. Right. Well, we're standing here as a testimony that they really can. Well, I think that so many people limit themselves to, they don't, they don't think that they can do, I don't know, like go to the nations as a family because they're afraid or they don't want to do the sacrifice and the right. hardship. Or they so, don't feel like they have enough money or yeah. resources. No, I mean, or, yeah, all of it. It's just but it's worth it. Like the fruit yeah. is in the pudding. Like yeah. it is really cool to see what God has done through our kids just because they've gone on the journey. It's worth a sacrifice. Yeah. And it's a huge sacrifice on you because you're having to, you know, be dad at the same time as like work. work. Yeah. <laughs> but, work, be dad, manage a band, manage right. a tour, manage, manage a ministry, be and dad. Football, <laughs> be nice. One question. Break brothers up from fighting. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fun. How do you not go insane? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's been a few moments. <laughs> yeah, we have our we have our moments. Um, so let's do this. I want to hear each of your favorite moments. You've been in Let Us Worship, gosh, for four years. You guys have been in and out of these <laughs> meetings. And uh, Ezra, you got yeah, the mic. He's ready. Let's go. Are you ready? Share us your favorite memory. My from favorite Let Us memory of Let Us Worship is Talk a when I got baptized in the San in San Diego in the ocean. It That's awesome. right. You did get baptized. Yeah. That yeah, was during I, like the lockdown. Yeah, that was in 2020 in the summer. And we were uh, we were on uh, near Oceanside or we're in between Oceanside and San Diego and there was 5,000 people on the beach and we kind of spontaneously went into baptisms and uh, Ezra was like, I want to get baptized. Yeah. And I talked to Kate, and I'm like, I, I feel like this is genuine, and and it really was. He was dying. Yeah, and the crazy thing was, is that he got baptized, and that picture of you getting baptized went like viral. Yeah. It was like oh, on Fox it News. Was like it was like in revival in oh. California. And it wasn't warm water. It was ice cold. Freezing, yeah, yeah. Tell like them. Freezing. I wouldn't even oh, want to put my feet in, and it was windy and cloudy outside. And that kid got in. Yeah. It felt so warm once I got in and out. I felt like I was too hot. Okay, wow. I don't Maybe know about all that. I don't know about all, all that. Over you. <laughs> I, I did. Maybe you never know. You could have had an encounter. Like my okay. skin was like 
cold, but my inside was warm. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. it happens. <laughs> <laughs> that's it happens when when you go in a really ice cold lake, yeah. like, and then yeah. you get baptized, and then and then um. And then your heart gets warm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then your heart, heart gets, gets warm. Your skin gets like okay. cold, and then your heart. What's it's like your favorite? Warm. Yeah, Let what's your what's your memory. favorite? Now that you're talking, what's your favorite moment of lettuce worship? My favorite when when is when we went to Montana. We're in Montana. You mean today? Yeah. Today's your favorite? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> it keeps getting better and better. This kid is a Montana boy, a kid yeah. after my own heart. Yeah, today was so powerful in Montana, being in front of the capital of uh, the state that I was born in, having my family there, having Zion there. You what what, what, what did you love about today? Just the dancing? No, I loved about worshiping. Oh, you loved about oh. worshiping. Okay. He loves worshiping. Okay, well, what, what's your favorite song then? Um, Liberty Bells. Liberty Bells. That's awesome. I love that song. I can hear those Liberty yeah. Bells. You are all rattling, rattling, rattling. I speak Jesus. Oh yeah, I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. All right, who's next? I can go. Okay. Probably one of my favorite moments was when I was 10 and we were in Washington, D.C. And it was raining, it was cold. And when I went up to pray in front of like, how many people? 40,000? A lot of people, let's just say. And in that moment before going up, I just like... I kind of got like nervous honestly but then as I started to pray I like had this I was like I kind of like plan out my prayer I'm like okay I'm gonna pray about this and this and this and then when I got in there it was completely different I just let the Lord just like because he even said when he sent out his disciples he's like I'm going to like give you the words to say you don't need to worry about what you're gonna say I'm gonna yeah. provide for you I'm gonna and that's also what this is totally backtracking, but it's amazing when we're traveling because he does provide for us. Yeah. He does provide yeah. what, like, this bus, let's say. <laughs> like, you didn't, yeah. that was a cool story. Very cool story. But it was just incredible. I just thought DC was my, one of my favorite moments. Well, and that prayer was so cool. Like, so many, we meet people in city after city that heard Katura pray that, and they're like, I'll never forget that. Yeah, moment. four years later, I keep, still get marked, or like, still get remarks and like yeah. stuff about that I'm like oh, wow I guess middle, in the middle of COVID in the middle yes. of the lockdowns in the middle of the rain I know it was... you stood up there and you prayed this just powerful yeah, all... there's no junior Holy Spirit guys yes. that's kind of what we're trying to say yes. right God can work through you in, in a powerful way just anyone like you can he can work anyone. through six year olds yeah you're not really? too young and you're not too old <laughs> all right Malachi you're you're the last one um I think my favorite memory was uh, the three year anniversary oh, when we did that event that, on, the beach, on, the, on beach. the beach on Sorry. the beach yeah. on the beach in California um, I just loved like how it was like so crazy I loved the, the worshiping it, I just really loved that and it was cool because you could see the beach when yeah you, were you could just see the beach when you're worshiping yeah that was an amazing night that yeah. was really really special one of my favorites, I'm gonna say, and then we'll ask mom, but I mean, I have so many favorites. Every time we go to another city, it's my new favorite. But yeah. being in Sacramento this year, oh yeah, that was for the powerful. four year anniversary. That one was, was yeah. That was, that was, was, that ranks up there because not only was it just, you know, thou, like 7,000 yeah. people, but we had the Harley Davidson biker guys yeah. there. We had, that was so we had a crazy. Jesus march. We yeah. had like, okay, oh. that's probably my favorite now. <laughs> I love that. That was really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. And then the loud, you could hear it from like, yeah. yeah. And like how there was, um, how we did that Jesus oh. mar march, even though like Pride was doing the march. Yeah. Yeah. And anyone, like when they came over, they like actually, like, it was sad because. They felt scared. They like felt scared when they would walk by because they thought it was like our event was like theirs, and they would like walk by and like kind of like hide themselves and run. And I'm just like, that's so sad. Like yeah. they, we need yeah. to speak to them. Sad. We need yeah. to speak to them. And we have so many testimonies of people coming to the Lord through that, yeah. and it's just incredible to hear. 
It was. It's really... Well, one of the things I, I want to mention and then... Well, actually, wait. You share your favorite. Well, that's what I was going to say. It actually you ties share in. Your well, I just think it's so special. I mean, it goes to say, like, the church has left the building. That's one of the best things about Let Us Worship. Because everyone around that doesn't didn't plan to be there gets yes. to experience it. Yes. Every city. And I often will stand in the back with the kids so that they can run around and play. And I just see so many people that are stumbling by and they experience, they just are, are always captivated. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you find them closer and closer and yes. closer. And then you find them and at then the you find front, them getting in the and altar call. Ministered to. I mean, I've watched it in city after city wow. after city. And so just like you were saying about Oceanside, like that one was crazy because you're right on the beach. There's people everywhere that just thought they were going to the beach and have, or have a life-changing moment. So, I mean, I, I can't, you know, I'm not good at favorites. Yeah. You always like to find the favorite. What's your favorite ice cream? What's your favorite? I don't like picking favorites because it's all just too Who's good. Who's your favorite kid? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who's your favorite wife? Yeah, uh, I only have one of those. Oh, thank goodness. So, kids anyway, I think that I, it's always all these little moments and experiences that are my favorite versus just like one city. Yeah. Because, like, I can think back to San Diego, or, or yeah, San Diego, I think back to Sacramento and the heat in, the, in 2020 that oh, just yeah. blew my mind, the hunger and the, the smoke. smoke. Yeah, and the then smoke. I think about, so you know, people. Reading and Alaska. Just all the different states and how each state God showed up in a different way. And I don't know. I think for me, if I'm going back to like during COVID in in 2020, 2021, it was so powerful just to see families together outside without fear. Yeah. It was so... Yeah. What what do you would say? Well, I was going to say like how... It's just, I just, anytime I go to church inside a building, it doesn't feel the same. I, know. I always want to do My wor- kids, actually, yeah. When I'm worshiping yes. outside, it just feels different. You just feel in God's nature and it's like, yeah. it, so anytime, yeah. yeah, when we go, like, go, it just, I don't feel as alive and I don't feel as, like, connected. connected. Yeah, connected to God. It's just so funny. So I'm like, I want to worship outside. Yeah. <laughs> so. They're ruined for church buildings. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think, I think there's something really cool and maybe you know one of the things I see some hindrances that I mean they've been challenges for us too Kate mentioned some of them but there's a protective thing a lot of times and kind of a helicopter mom thing sometimes that people employ on their kids and and it really does hold them back obviously we're in this battle all the time because I'm like, let them go, let them, you know, Kate's there are our children are alive because of my wife is basically what I'm (laughs) trying to say Okay, especially our boys. However, I have seen Kate grow in letting them experience life, letting them experience these cities, letting them come on the bus like this. Who knows when these kids are going to go to sleep? And we got a 12 hour drive tonight, and we're going to wake up and do this all over again in the morning, and right? We might eat chicken nuggets for five days in a row. Yeah. And it's okay. <laughs> they keep growing. Yeah. Somehow, some way, you know. Um, maybe more days in a row. So maybe speak to that, like to the moms and to I mean, you, you, people out there that it's like, you maybe they've allowed that to hold them back. Oh yeah, they're especially. I mean, we're we're going back to babies. Our kids never had set naps and <laughs> like going to sleep at the same time. We just they've grown up in yeah, meetings. They've, grown they've, up they've in gone revival. to sleep in worship services yeah. since they were kids. Yeah. In fact. When they were in Kate's, Kate's belly, just in order to get them ready, I would put headphones over her stomach and we would blast worship. Yeah. <laughs> so there's been never any type of uh, routine and safety with you. So <laughs> they've learned from birth and, and on airplanes. And I mean, I don't know. But they can all read. They can. They can all spell. Yeah. They're all amazing. They're yeah, all smart. Worry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're doing good. We're in our grades. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. I've got yeah. all A's. You got all A's, guys. Yeah. Yeah, we got, we got all A's. Yeah. Like, all good stuff in every single day. You did. You got all E's in your class, yeah. didn't you? That's a good. And all A's Excellent. And all yeah, I think that just, like, not taking life too seriously for kids and just being hung up on yeah. um, if we're going to ruin them because they don't have this, this, or like a... Right. 
all their food groups and if they don't yeah. get enough sleep and if they don't get to see their friends. I mean, I've had all of this battle in my head for sure. There's been days of mom guilt and I've had to pull myself out and understand the fruit of what they're experiencing is going to be far greater than any type of fear that I'm battling in my head yeah. and how much they're gaining from being around people all around the world right. um, is far more important than a safe right. safe life. But right. I mean, it's been an ongoing journey for me for sure yeah. of just having to let go yeah. to this day. And you know, a lot of it is, is, is dancing around you know, we want them to be in sports. We want them to have friends. We want them to have a life. But I'll say this, and then and then we'll we'll, we'll wrap this party up here, and get ready for bed. Yeah. Um, is yeah. is I want to say this. No. I I there's something. I'm the product of, and we're the product of seeing our parents do this before us. Like I remember, you know, I grew up in a very stable home. It was amazing. My parents were missionaries but my dad was a doctor so he had a full-time practice and I watched him lay down his pre his medical practice and go full-time into missions chasing hard after what God had for him and that marked me even though as a kid I was annoyed because I didn't want to move and I didn't want to leave and I was the one I was so angry I remember as this tween tweeny kid that was mad that they were moving us out of Montana all the way over to the East Coast but now I look at it not only would I not have met her and these human beings wouldn't exist but then when it came our chance to lay everything down and do this like just for example in 2020 and lay down our nice amazing 15 acres in Northern California and a peaceful life and you know, a yeah. great life and chase hard yeah. after God and do something crazy yeah. like the precedent had been set. And so I want to encourage those of you that are out there. Maybe you are in a lineage where you saw God do something like that in your family. Or maybe you're the first one. You know, maybe you're going to be the one to start it. Maybe you're the one to shift generational curses and you know things that have been over your family maybe you're the first one that your marriage is going to make it to the end and your kids are going to love jesus to the end you know and i just want to encourage you like i don't think we we realize like we're establishing what we do as parents and our decisions in following jesus you can never take away what happened in 2020 from these kids they saw it they experienced it they saw the pushback they saw the resistance they watched us as we were in tears sometimes. They watched us as we were battling with, should we be doing this? Like we're an open book. And so they have seen that and they've seen the faithfulness of God. You yeah. know, I have seen it for myself, <laughs> the faithfulness <laughs> of God. So. And we've seen, also we've seen so many miracles too. We saw people like from deaf to like hearing and blind and then people getting out of their wheelchairs and it's just actually marks you and see actually there is a God out there when yeah. people say there isn't I'm like just look at the stories hear the testimonies look at the Bible it is crazy how many times the Bible proves that it is actually th like true so many times over like 2,000 times maybe even more it's a, it's just incredible to <laughs> experience it that's so awesome that's so awesome. Well, we're so excited uh, to share this with you guys. I know that this will probably be the first of many. Uh, people have been asking us for a long time to come out with content and stories on what God's done, and we feel more of a release now. So um, we got some really good stories, and yeah. God is still writing them. He's not done yet. And, you know, for those of you out there, you families, this is the season where God is restoring things. And he's bringing prodigal sons and daughters home. He's restoring broken marriages. And, and he's causing us to fall into alignment on his will and his path for our life. And we need people out there. Like we're gonna be gathered again this year, four years later on the National Mall in DC with families all over America. In a year where the enemies try to take out families and divide families, we're gonna stand unified together not only for the future of our nation, but for the future of this generation that's growing up and is gonna know God. Any last words you got?
come to D.C. with your family. Yes. Yes. I mean, there's so many people that have always wanted to take their kids to the Capitol, yeah. make it a field trip, make it a family trip. Yeah, we're going to do Jesus marches. We're going to do kid worship it's stuff. Just, it's going to be awesome, there's guys. There's nothing like praying on, right. on the mall. And it's not a mall where you shop. It's like, <laughs> don't worry. Just being there, Please being on what? the ground. Yeah, exactly. And I've been, I've been trying to take, I, I've been taking Kate there since we were teenagers. I was like, when we first started dating, I was, I was like... 17 when you took me, you're like, you have to go to D.C. It's the most important place on planet Earth. <laughs> and you're like, took me all around. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Something's never changed. Yeah. So we would love for you guys to join us. Any last things you guys want to say? Um, what? I love when we worship all the time in Montana and all the states. Yeah, you I do. Love. He loves Montana and he loves worship. My kind of guy. God bless y'all. <laughs> yeah. Let us bless worship you. is so good. <laughs> Let us worship is so good. All right, we're going to pray over you guys. Just receive this from our family. And uh, why don't you start and I'll finish. Okay, why don't you start and then pray. Dear Jesus, we hope people would get healed if they're hurt. Dear Jesus, I love, I love you, and I love you when you always let us heal people, and thank you for healing people, and I love Jesus, amen. Amen. You want to pray? I will be. <laughs> this is what he does, just throws it. I'm kidding. <laughs> Father, I just want to thank you that we get to do this and we're going to share these stories that we get to share like to the people and thank you so much for being just such a merciful such a wonderful god for being there with for us in the times that are hard like COVID. it was hard time people were going through a lot of devastating things and just it was just hard on people's hearts so we thank you so much for being with us I pray that you will, this will touch people and that it will spread around and that you'll just be with us today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs> Jesus, we just thank you that family is beautiful and that you created family and it wasn't created, like, especially with ministry, it doesn't have to sit in the, like a, a man or a woman at a pulpit, but it's a family is our first ministry and I just thank you that um, you can lead us and guide us into uncharted waters into hard times you can give the grace for the pace you totally give us the grace um, to handle anything that comes our way Lord I just pray is that people can be inspired and that they can be I don't know just ignited with dreams that they thought we're too late because they didn't accomplish them or go after them before they had kids. I just pray that you will help pe open people's eyes that it's beautiful to do life adventure with your family. It is worth it. <laughs> and pray that you would just give people the courage <laughs> to go after those dreams with their family. Yeah, Lord, we just pray. We just thank you for this amazing season, God, where you are restoring families and that we get the chance to see it in every single city that we go to. Lord, we just pray that this story and just maybe just peeling back the veil on the, the real uh, craziness of the Voigt family, that this would just inspire and encourage people all over the world, God, to run after you with their whole heart and to know, Lord, that you are working in the lives of their children. And that all we're called to do as parents is get them in the proximity of encountering you and that God, you'll take care of the rest. So I just pray for the parents out there, Lord, just release the stress and the weight and the anxiety off of them, Lord, and set their heart free, God, to know that you are in control and you are the one that watches over our children. You are the one that watches over them in the night. You are the one that takes care of them. You are the good father and we trust you. And just pray that every single one of these kids would go to sleep right after this is over in jesus name amen hey listen wow, we're going after miracles <laughs> yeah this is that's a that would be the greatest miracle right yeah. hey uh thank you too i want to end with this thank you for everybody out there that has prayed for our family yeah. um literally we are sustained by your prayers many of you have sent in gifts to the kids 
you guys have gotten a lot of gifts, yeah. a lot of really cool gifts from people. And we read every letter, we read every DM, I share with them every dream and word that you have over them. And we are so grateful. We really, really, really are. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your amazing care, your prayer, your support for the Voight family. We could not do this without you. God bless you guys. Hope this inspired you. Peace. Peace.